I welcome you for uh, the module 5 lecture 2 in the series of uh, lectures on uh, surface finish measurement. In this uh, lecture, we will be discussing about uh, the various uh, parameters which are used to specify the surface roughness and uh, we will also study about uh, the different uh, methods of surface finish measurement like uh, contact methods and non-contact uh, methods and also we will study about uh, the various elements of uh, stylus type uh, instruments. We will discuss about uh, the uh, types of skids and the design of stylus and uh, the out of phase condition of the skid and then uh, we will also learn how to select uh, the measuring uh, parameters like uh, cutoff length and then finally, we will see some uh, experiments. Now, we will start uh, with the parameters, roughness uh, parameters. So, first one is uh, R A roughness uh, average which is also known as uh, central line uh, average. You can see here uh, uh, after uh, getting the profile, the, the work piece surface uh, is kept on the table of uh, the measuring instrument and uh, the stylus uh, will move on the surface and finally, we get the profile as output from the measuring instrument. Now, we have to analyze uh, this uh, profile. In order to analyze this uh, uh, profile, we can see at uh, we have to select uh, the length sampling length uh, L and uh, uh, we have to draw the ordinates h 1, h 2, h 3, h 4 up to h n at uh, equal uh, distance and then uh, we have to measure the heights of uh, these uh, ordinates and then finally, we should find the summation of uh, heights like that is h 1 plus h 2 plus h 3 up to h n divided by number of ordinates. So, this uh, will give the R A value. If ordinates are measured in terms of uh, uh, micrometers, then uh, we get uh, the R A value in terms of micrometers. So, another way of uh, see in the uh, previous case, uh, you can see here when we select the ordinates at regular intervals, some of the important uh, uh, ordinates uh, we may miss. So, for example, here we have this uh, peak. So, this uh, peak uh, we will be losing. Similarly, if we draw the H 7 here, so we will be losing this uh, valley uh, depth. So, we get uh, a value uh, which is somewhat uh, erroneous. So, in order to and also it is uh, difficult to uh, draw too many ordinates at very close uh, spacings and it becomes difficult to measure. So, we have another uh, uh, parameter, uh, we have a, a, a parameter R A which can be analyzed uh, you, by means of measuring the areas. You can see here, we have the main line or central line and below the central line, we have areas uh, A 1, A 3, A 5 etcetera and above the central line, we have uh, areas A 2, A 4, uh, A 6 uh, up to A n. Now, these areas can be measured using uh, planimeter. So, that measurement of ordinates uh, uh, is uh, avoided. So, accurately we can measure the areas using planimeter and then uh, we can uh, measure, we can uh, calculate the summation of all the areas uh, divided by the length. So, this will give us R A value. Now, what are the advantages of using R A parameter? This is most commonly used parameter to monitor the production processes. So, this is the default parameter on a drawing if the parameter is not specified. So, 
this RA parameter is available in almost all uh, commercially available uh, uh, surface finish measuring uh, instruments and this is statistically very stable and uh, repeatable uh, parameter and this is very good uh, for random type of surfaces such as uh, grand, uh, grinding uh, ground surface. A good parameter where a process is under control and where the conditions are always uh, same like uh, uh, cutting tips, speeds, feeds etc. are same then this parameter uh, is better uh, to use. Then disadvantage of REI is not, uh, this is not a good uh, discriminator of uh, uh, different types of surfaces. So, no distinction is made between peaks and uh, uh, valleys. Now, another uh, parameter is RQ root mean square roughness. So, in this case instead of taking only H1, H2 values, the squares of ordinates are uh, taken uh, like this H1 square plus H2 square plus H3 square like this divided by uh, number of uh, ordinates uh, under uh, square. So, this will uh, give us RQ. So, RQ is uh, typically 15 to 11, 11 to 15 percent higher than uh, RA and RQ, RQ is more sensitive to peaks and uh, valleys than RA uh, because the amplitudes are uh, squared. And uh, this is used to control very fine uh, surfaces in uh, scientific measurements and uh, statistical uh, evaluations. Now, the next uh, parameter is uh, RY, is, this is also known as uh, R max. You can see here this is the profile that is uh, obtained uh, over uh, a sampling, a particular sampling length. Now, the gap between the peak and uh, the valley within the sampling length is termed as R max or uh, R by. So, it is the vertical distance between the top of highest uh, peak and the bottom of uh, deepest uh, valley within the sampling uh, length. Now, this is uh, R z. So, we have the evaluation length uh, which is divided into 5 uh, equal parts. So, we have 5 uh, sampling lengths R z 1, R z 2, R z 3, R z 4 and R z 5 and in each sampling length we have to find the peak to valley distance. Now, this is R z 1. Similarly, peak to valley in the second uh, sampling length that is R z 2, R z 3 like this. Now, after finding uh, RZ1, RZ2 up to RZ5, the average uh, peak to valley profile uh, is uh, calculated. So, that is uh, RZ. Now, this is more uh, sensitive than uh, RA to changes in the surface finish as maximum profile heights and uh, not averages are being uh, examined. R max is uh, useful for surfaces where a single defect is uh, not permissible. For example, uh, a seal with a single uh, scratch, if there is a scratch in the uh, seal, now that, that, that also will be uh, considered. So, if it exceeds, if the R max exceeds a certain limit, then that particular seal is rejected. And then Rz and R max are used together to monitor the variations of surface finish in production processes. So, similar values of Rz and R max indicate a consistent surface finish, while a significant difference indicates a surface defect in an otherwise uh, consistent uh, surface. Now, here uh, uh, we can see a, a profile uh, in which uh, we have considered uh, 5 sampling lengths Rz1, Rz2, Rz3, Rz4 and Rz5. Uh, we can see here in uh, Rz1, Uh, Rz1 value is uh, 3.2 micrometer that uh, we can see here. This is the peak in uh, this particular sampling length and this is the valley. So, this distance, this distance is, uh, this is about uh, 1.6 uh, 
micrometers and uh, this is about uh, 1.6 uh, micrometers. So, when we add these two we get uh, 3.2 micrometers. Similarly, the RZ uh, value for this particular uh, sampling length is uh, this one. So, here uh, this is uh, 2 micrometer and uh, here it is uh, 2 micrometer. So, peak to valley distance is uh, 4 uh, micrometer. Similarly, RZ 3 is 4.1 and RZ 4 is 2.9 and RZ 5 is 3. So, when we calculate the average of these 5 values, we get this uh, RZ of uh, 3.5 uh, micrometer. This is average uh, RZ value. Now, coming to the next uh, parameter, this is uh, R P. Now, this is the gap, uh, this is the highest peak, the maximum distance between the center line and the highest peak is uh, termed as R p within the given uh, sampling length. Also, the distance between the center line and the lowest valley is uh, known as R v value. and then uh, R t, this is maximum peak to valley height, the absolute value between the highest and the lowest uh, peaks. So, R t is equal to R p plus uh, R v, R t is equal to R p plus R v. When we add these two, we get uh, R t value. So, next one is R t m, mean uh, R t, mean peak to valley uh, roughness. Now, uh, uh, we can see here, we have this evaluation length uh, which is uh, divided into 5 uh, sampling lengths and uh, this is uh, the first sampling length in which uh, we have uh, peak to valley distance uh, it is nothing but z1. Similarly, the second, uh, second sampling length we have uh, z2 this is the peak to valley gap similarly z3, z4, z5. So, when we calculate the average of these uh, 5 values we get uh, RT. Uh, mean uh, peak to valley roughness. And then uh, this is uh, uh, P t value total peak to valley profile. So, over the evaluation length, the gap between uh, the top uh, topmost point on the peak, uh, peak and uh, the lowest point and this gap is uh, a total peak to valley profile uh, height. And we have another uh, uh, parameter 10 point average, 10 point height average is also known as RZ uh, value, uh, RZ parameter. So, again in the evaluation length, uh, we have to consider uh, 5 uh, peaks so you can see here in this profile P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Five uh, highest peaks are considered within the evaluation length. Similarly, five lowest valleys are considered. You can see here V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5. And now, the average absolute value of uh, the five highest peaks and the five uh, lowest valleys over the evaluation length will give us uh, RZ uh, value. That means, we have to uh, add the ordinates P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and minus the summation of uh, uh, ordinates V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. Uh, then, uh, if we feed these values in this uh, expression, we get uh, RZ uh, value, 10 point over height average value. value. So, now coming to the waviness uh, parameters. So, this is uh, uh, waviness is a larger component of surface texture upon which uh, uh, roughness is uh, superimposed like uh, we have the surface uh, roughness and then uh, we have this uh, waviness. 
So, this uh, profile will give us a waviness uh, profile and uh, the parameter that is used to specify this waviness is uh, waviness uh, height that is the maximum height of waviness uh, data within the evaluation length. This is the evaluation length and this is uh, the peak and valley. So, this gap is uh, uh, known as uh, waviness uh, height and it is specified uh, by the symbol W t. So, this uh, waviness height uh, parameter is used wherein where in addition to roughness, waviness is also uh, critical. Now, moving to the spacing uh, parameters, uh, we have uh, this parameter P c, uh, we have this uh, profile wherein we have uh, uh, peaks 1, uh, 2, 3, 4 etcetera and valleys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 etcetera. So, this, uh, this P c it is nothing but uh, peak count or number of peaks included in the analysis of uh, the profile. A peak is uh, defined as a data point whose height is above a software selected uh, bandwidth. This is the software selected bandwidth and we have some uh, peaks uh, above this uh, bandwidth. So, these are considered for the uh, uh, calculating the P c. So, uh, if we consider uh, an area of uh, surface, then uh, the number of peaks per unit area that is termed as uh, peak uh, density. Another term is yes, this is the average spacing between local peaks over the evaluation lens. Now, we can see here in this pro profile, we have uh, the evaluation length and uh, we have uh, peaks uh, here, one uh, peak and second peak, this is the gap between two peaks. Similarly, we have considered one more peak here and another uh, peak here. Uh, no, no, this the distance between this peak and this peak is uh, S 2 and similarly, distance between this peak and this uh, peak is S 3 and so like this, uh, we have to measure the gaps, uh, these gaps uh, that is uh, spacing between uh, the peaks and then the we should find uh, the average, average spacing using this uh, expression. So, wherein S is equal to S 1 plus S 2 up to S 6 divided by C. If you consider 6 uh, peaks, then uh, S 1 plus S 2 up to C, C divided by number of uh, peaks, uh, peaks considered. So, this uh, will give the average uh, spacing. So, now uh, having uh, understood uh, the various uh, parameters used uh, to specify the roughness, we will move to the measurement of uh, surface roughness, how we can measure the surface roughness, how we can get uh, the various uh, parameter values and what are the kinds of uh, measuring uh, methods uh, used, what are the different types of measuring instruments. So, those things uh, we will uh, study. So, the roughness uh, may be measured using uh, any one of the following uh, methods. So, we can uh, uh, measure the surface roughness of uh, the component. Uh, uh, in the offline method that is, that is after the production is over, the part is taken out of the machine tool and it is uh, de-oiled and de -burled. and then it is kept uh, in the uh, uh, proper atmospheric temperature condition and then the appropriate instrument is selected and then uh, the surface is uh, measured to get uh, the various uh, parameters. So, in the offline methods, we have uh, uh, different uh, uh, we have contact type and uh, non-contact type uh, measurement methods. So, in the contact type, uh, so we have uh, stylus uh, probe type instrument and uh, Macrin uh, 3 uh, instrument. And in the non-contact type offline uh, method, we have uh, optical uh, sy systems like tool makers microscope can be used uh, to analyze the surface. And then we have a laser based uh, system which works on uh, reflected light intensity uh, method and then image processing systems are also available. And then uh, we can also use uh, some comparison uh, uh, so standards. Uh, using comparison standards, uh, we can uh, uh, check uh, the surface under question. So, we can use uh, visual examination or uh, tactile uh, examination. So, we will also learn uh, about uh, the comparison uh, uh, standards. 
And then there are uh, uh, in process uh, measurement uh, method that means when the work piece is being machined we can measure the surface finish without uh, unloading uh, the work piece from the machining uh, uh, setup. So, many methods are being used to measure the surface uh, roughness during uh, machining uh, uh, is in process. So, we can use uh, machine vision uh, system or uh, inductance uh, method. Uh, in the machine vision uh, the light source is used to illuminate the surface uh, with a digital system to view the surface and the data being sent to a computer for uh, analysis. The digitized data is then used with a correlation chart to get uh, the actual uh, roughness uh, values. That means, initially we should use uh, some standard uh, specimens uh, uh, whose uh, surface roughness is known and then uh, using those uh, standard specimens uh, we can uh, calibrate uh, the uh, machine vision system. That means, for a particular uh, surface roughness what is the digital data we get like that we can calibrate and then we can use uh, the component uh, uh, for which a surface is to be tested we should keep them uh, under machine vision and then what is the digital signal we obtained and then that should be compared with uh, the digital data obtained from the standard uh, specimen. So, that is the method uh, used in the machine vision system and uh, inductance method is also uh, used in which uh, pickup is used inductance pickup is used to measure the distance between the surface and the uh, pickup. This uh, measurement gives a parametric value that may be used to give a comparative uh, uh, roughness. So, it will be something like this we have the uh, work piece uh, which is being uh, machined and then uh, we can uh, always use uh, an inductance uh, uh, pickup. As the surface uh, uh, roughness varies this gap will be varying. So, that gap is uh, sensed and uh, the signal is uh, sent out uh, by the inductance uh, uh, pickup which is uh, supplied to the computer uh, for uh, analyzing uh, the surface uh, roughness. And uh, ultrasound uh, systems are also uh, used uh, a spherically focused uh, ultrasonic sensor is positioned with a non normal incidence angle above the surface. So, it is uh, something uh, like this. So, this is the uh, work piece and then ultrasonic uh, uh, sensor is uh, positioned in non normal incidence angle okay, which is not normal to the surface and then uh, the reflected sound wave is uh, sensed by another uh, uh, receiver and the signal is sent to the computer for uh, analyzing uh, the surface. So, when the uh, due to the asperities uh, the reflected uh, sound wave uh, characteristic will change. So, which is uh, uh, used to calculate uh, the surface uh, roughness and then we have a pneumatic uh, method. So, this uh, we will uh, study we will discuss after uh, some time. Now, let us uh, study some of the uh, stylus uh, probe uh, instruments. So, the design of uh, stylus probe and what are the various elements of uh, stylus uh, type uh, instruments. I can see here uh, we have uh, the surface uh, being uh, measured, we have asperities, peaks, and valleys, etcetera, etcetera. And then uh, we have a stylus here, a pointed uh, stylus. So, that pointed uh, stylus is uh, made to move on the surface under question and uh, because of these asperities the stylus will move up and down. Okay. And then because of this uh, up and down uh, movement here we have a pickup. So, the design and the construction of these, this pickup we will uh, study later the stylus will move up and down and uh, the pickup will give the signal which is uh, sent to the computer for uh, analysis uh, purpose. Uh, this uh, stylus uh, uh, tip it has a very small radius of 5 to 10 uh, micrometer 
and normally it is made out of uh, diamond uh, material to resist uh, the wear. Now pointed uh, probe is drawn slowly over the surface, again uh, the movement is uh, made, probe is made to move at a particular uh, slow uh, speed and then the variations, due to variations stylus will move and then uh, uh, the signal uh, is uh, digitized and it is sent uh, for the computer, sent to the computer for analysis uh, purpose. In the uh, commercially available uh, instruments, uh, there are magnification uh, switches depending upon the surface whether it is a rough turned surface or shaped surface or milled surface or ground surface or lapped surface. So depending upon the machining process used, so magnification uh, switch, magnification can be selected. For lapped surface very high magnification is used whereas for rough turned uh, surface very low magnification is uh, enough. Also we can specify what is the cutoff length or sampling length, Depend, again, this is again depend, depending upon the, uh, the uh, machining process uh, that is selected. If it is grinding process or lapping uh, process, so wherein uh, the, we get fine uh, surface, cutoff, very small uh, cutoff length of uh, less than 0.8 millimeter is used. So if it is uh, rough surface, uh, turned surface or milled uh, surface, we can use uh, a cutoff length of 0.8 or 2.5 uh, like that. So the cutoff uh, length selection uh, uh, we will uh, discuss again after uh, some time. The instrument uh, will display uh, the various uh, surface finish uh, parameters like RA, RP, uh, RT, etc., etc. There is a display device. Also, we can uh, get the printout of uh, the uh, profile. The profile uh, print we can uh, obtain uh, at different uh, magnification uh, uh, values. Now here uh, you can see a commercially available uh, instrument. So you can see the various buttons. Uh, uh, we, this is the button to start uh, the instrument. Uh, so switch on the instrument and then uh, for starting uh, the movement of the stylus. And you can see this is the display device and uh, the cutoff length selected is 2.5 uh, millimeter and uh, you can see it is now it is showing RA value uh, 0 micrometer. So different uh, uh, by operating this uh, data point uh, different parameters uh, we can select and uh, the value of that particular parameter is uh, displayed here and we can see the, uh, the probe here, the pickup, pickup uh, we can uh, see here, so which will move on the surface and then uh, the data that is obtained is uh, analyzed and then uh, the particular uh, parameter is uh, calculated and then it is uh, display, displayed. So in this case uh, there is no printer, it is only a display device. Now what are the various elements of a stylus uh, type uh, instrument? Now you can see here this is the surface under uh, question which is uh, to be measured and then we have uh, a stylus here, a diamond uh, point and uh, then we have a pickup here, the details of pickup we will uh, study after some time and uh, there is a traverse unit or in other words a drive unit. So this uh, stylus uh, should be made to move on the surface at uh, a predefined uh, speed. So we need to have a driving unit, so this is the driving unit to move the pickup and uh, the uh, signals given by this uh, stylus uh, they are amplified and then appropriate uh, filters are uh, used. For example, uh, if we want only waviness uh, that uh, can be indicated here, if we want only the roughness uh, parameter we can uh, filter out uh, the waviness and uh, sometimes uh, we have to uh, eliminate uh, the form error also. So for such a thing uh, different kinds of uh, filters are used and finally we, uh, the value is uh, indicated, uh, the pa roughness parameter is indicated or waviness parameter is indicated depending upon the requirement. And here you can see there is a uh, cutoff length uh, selector, depending upon uh, the machining process we can select appropriate uh, cutoff uh, length. Also we have a switch. Uh, to select the appropriate magnification. 
So, if the surface is very fine lapped surface, then we should use very high value of uh, vertical magnification. Uh, if it is rough surface, we can uh, lower the vertical uh, magnification. And uh, you can see the printer attachment is also there. So, we can uh, get uh, a, a print of uh, the profile. Now, you can see a commercially available uh, setup here. This is the uh, work piece uh, for which a surface finish is to be uh, measured. And then this is the instrument, stylus uh, type instrument and this is the probe. And uh, now, you can see depending upon the height of uh, the uh, work piece, we have to adjust the height of this uh, instrument. Otherwise, uh, the, uh, there will be error in the uh, uh, measured uh, value. So, for adjusting the height, you can see a stand is uh, provided. So, depending upon the height of uh, the workpiece, uh, we have to adjust the height of this instrument. And then, uh, the, uh, it is connected to a printer and display device. So, here uh, various buttons are there to select uh, the appropriate uh, magnification, cutoff length and what type of, uh, what are the various parameters uh, needed etcetera can be selected here. And then uh, the value, the selected uh, parameter is uh, displayed as well as the profile uh, uh, print uh, we can uh, obtain. Now, how the data is uh, processed, you can see here we have a flow chart here. So, the real uh, surface uh, profile. Now, this is the real uh, profile uh, surface which is to be measured, which is to be analyzed. And then uh, we have to uh, trace the profile. That means, the stylus of the surface finish measurement instrument will uh, uh, should be moved on the surface to be tested. You can see here, we have uh, a conical uh, stylus and then a radius uh, tip. So, this radius uh, will be uh, like uh, 2 micrometer or 5 micrometer or uh, 10 micrometer. And uh, uh, this uh, stylus or probe tip will move on the surface. Now, you can see this is the center of uh, this uh, uh, probe, uh, curve, uh, curved uh, probe. And now, when we move this uh, stylus, now you can see this is the locus, locus of uh, the center point, this point. Okay. Now, you can see here the locus, we have a sharp point here and here also we have a sharp point. And then we, we have a peak here. So, at this place you can see, instead of getting a peak, uh, we have a radius here. So, a sort of uh, filtering uh, effect will be there because of this uh, uh, radius of the stylus uh, probe. So, we get uh, the uh, traced profile uh, like this. So, which consists of uh, the various elements like uh, form, waviness, roughness, etcetera, etcetera. Uh, that means, uh, the total profile which is a combination of uh, form mirror, waviness and roughness we get. And then using appropriate uh, filters, low pass filters and high pass filters, uh, different filter, Gaussian filter, different filters are used to get uh, the required uh, profile. So, if we pass this uh, data obtained uh, in this total profile uh, uh, via this uh, low pass filter, then we get the primary profile. Okay, you can see here uh, primary profile uh, parameter, so uh, which has waviness as well as uh, the roughness, the form error has been uh, removed. And then again, uh, this data should be passed uh, through high pass uh, filter, so that waviness uh, can be removed. And now, we get uh, the roughness uh, profile. You can see here, all the waviness uh, has been uh, uh, removed here. Only roughness parameters uh, we get here, roughness profile parameters we can obtain. And if you pass this uh, profile data, primary profile data via the band pass uh, filter, then we get only waviness profile and uh, we can eliminate the roughness uh, parameters. So, the profile what we get will be something like this. So, it is roughness element uh, uh, micro irregularities has been uh, removed and we get only waviness profile uh, parameter. So, like this, 
by passing uh, the data obtained via the various uh, filters we can get uh, the required uh, parameters. Now, how do we select uh, the sampling length or uh, uh, cutoff length? Now, you can see here we have uh, listed different machining process, milling, boring, turning, grinding, planing, etc. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, uh, sampling length. For milling, uh, we can select a 0.8 millimeter uh, sampling length or 2.5 millimeter or 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Again, uh, this depends whether the milled surface is fine or very rough. If the milled surface is very rough, we can select uh, the uh, cutoff length of 2.5 or 8. If the milled surface is very fine by adjusting the, the uh, fine uh, uh, machining parameters, if we get fine finish, then we can go for 0.8 millimeter cutoff length. Similarly, we know that uh, you can see here milling, uh, uh, in the milling process, the, normally we get an RA, RA value of 0.8 to 7 micrometer. So, uh, and in the case of grinding, uh, we get very fine uh, surface finish so that is RA value of 0 0.025 up to 1.6 micrometer. So, better uh, uh, fine uh, finish uh, we get here. So, in the case of grinding, uh, uh, we can select lower uh, cutoff lengths like 0.25 millimeter, 0.8 millimeter, something like that. Now, this is by knowing the machining process, we can select appropriate sampling length. Or if we know roughly what is the surface finish that is obtained, uh, then also we can uh, select uh, the cutoff uh, length. For example, if we have uh, a uh, surface, if we know that the surface roughness, uh, roughness on the uh, surface uh, under question is uh, uh, between 0.02 and 0.1, then we can select a finer uh, cutoff length of uh, 0.25 uh, millimeter. Or if uh, the surface finish is in the range of 2 to 10 uh, micrometer, then we can go for uh, a cutoff length of uh, 2.5 uh, millimeter. Okay? So, by knowing uh, approximate roughness value, we can select cutoff uh, length or by knowing the process also, we can select uh, the appropriate uh, cutoff length. Now, uh, uh, we should uh, know one more thing that uh, sam ratio of sampling length uh, to evaluation length. Now, you can see here, normally, the evaluation length is uh, divided into five uh, sampling parts or if we know the sampling length, for example, say 0.8 millimeter is the sampling length, five times of this will give us the evaluation. That means, 0.8 into 5 that is uh, 4. So, 4 is the 4 millimeter is the evaluation uh, length. Similarly, uh, if the cutoff length is uh, 8 uh, millimeter, 5 times of this is uh, 40 millimeter. Now, what is the effect of uh, cutoff uh, length selection on surface finish uh, measurement? Now, you can see here, this is uh, the profile obtained without any filtering. And then, uh, when we select a cutoff of 0.8 millimeter, okay, then uh, the finish, surface finish value obtained will be 3.5 to 4.2 micrometer. But instead of selecting 0 0.8 uh, millimeter cutoff, if we select a very finer uh, cutoff length of uh, 0.25 millimeter, then the roughness uh, uh, value is uh, 1.8 to 2.2 micrometer uh, RA. Similarly, if you go for very fi finer uh, surface, uh, uh, finer cutoff length, uh, then uh, uh, so you can see here this is 0 0.08 millimeter cutoff is uh, selected then the, uh, the RA value obtained will be 0 0.95 to 1.05 micrometer. Uh, that means, if we change the cutoff length, the RA value will also change. So, we should uh, exercise a lot of care while selecting uh, the appropriate uh, cutoff uh, length. If we select wrong cutoff length, then uh, the measurement data that is obtained will uh, uh, be useless. So, that is why uh, the uh, standards uh, specify for uh, the different uh, machining process, what should be the cutoff length uh, that is to be selected or specified in various uh, standards. Now, uh, 
So, we should understand one more thing that is a distortion ratio. So, you can see here uh, we have uh, 4000 divided by 200. So, 4000 is the vertical magnification. So, you can see here four parts are there this is one and this is second part and this is third and this is fourth part. So, each is having a, a value of 1000. So, total height is 4000 uh, uh, units. So, this is the magnification. 4000 times the magnification, uh, the roughness is uh, magnified. So, and the horizontal magnification is uh, 200 uh, times. Now, when we select this particular distortion ratio, this is the profile that is uh, obtained. Now, if we change the distortion ratio, then uh, the profile, the, the surface graph uh, gets uh, distorted. We get a, another a different kind of uh, surface uh, uh, graph. You can see here, the distortion ratio is 4000 divided by 50, 4000 by 50. So, the vertical magnification remains same, whereas uh, horizontal magnification uh, has been reduced by 4 uh, times. Here it is 200 uh, units and here it is uh, 50 units. That means, the length is compressed. So, this uh, profile is uh, compressed. So, just by observing uh, the profile uh, graph, we cannot uh, say. Uh, uh, so, if we change uh, the distortion uh, uh, ratio and uh, the look of the profile uh, will uh, change, the, we, will, we do not get a similar uh, graphs. Uh, similarly, we have one more example here. This is the ground uh, uh, surface profile with a distortion ratio of 10,000 to 50. You can see here for milled surface, okay, vertical magnification that is selected is 4,000, uh, whereas in the ground uh, workpiece, the magnification selected is uh, 10,000. Since uh, the surface will be very fine, the very high magnification we have to uh, select to get uh, the profile. Now, the same uh, ground surface, when we change the distortion ratio, now you can see vertical magnification is the 10,000 only, whereas uh, the horizontal magnification is changed to 200, then we get a profile uh, like uh, this. And uh, now let us study about uh, the stylus and uh, datum. So, there are uh, two types of uh, stylus uh, instruments one with uh, true datum, we say skidless instrument and another with surface uh, datum, wherein uh, some skid is uh, provided to establish the reference. Of reference. Now, this uh, uh, picture shows a true datum or skidless instrument. Uh, you can see the probe uh, which is moved on uh, the surface and uh, the datum is provided by the instrument external to the surface. So, the datum is not obtained by the uh, surface itself, it is provided outside. So, that is known as a skidless instrument or true datum uh, instrument. You can see another version of uh, true datum uh, uh, instrument here, we have used uh, an optical flat, very flat uh, surface is used uh, as true datum and this is the uh, pickup uh, unit and this is the stylus uh, unit and when we move uh, the uh, pick up, you can see the stylus will move uh, up and down depending upon the surface roughness and uh, waviness. Now, the advantage of true datum is that the resulting graph is nearly a true representation of the surface along the line showing uh, form error, uh, waviness and uh, roughness. So, it gives a total uh, uh, profile. The disadvantage of this system is uh, it is very difficult to set up the instrument. Now, you can see here uh, the datum, true datum height should be properly adjusted uh, so that the it is parallel almost uh, uh, parallel and in line with uh, the surface in uh, uh, question. So, very precise uh, alignment of the surface uh, uh, is uh, required particularly if surface of tapered component uh, is uh, to be measured. Now, uh, you can see the mounting of uh, tapered component. When uh, tapered components are to be measured, how do we adjust uh, the datum? 
in the case of uh, true datum uh, system. So, we can always use uh, a work table with uh, ball joint. We can see here a work table uh, with a ball joint. So, depending upon the taperness, we can always uh, 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 align uh, this, uh, we can change the inclination of this uh, table so that the surface uh, becomes parallel uh, to the stylus movement or the probe movement uh, like this. So, so we have uh, a tapered uh, component like this and then we have the stylus and then externally we have uh, the datum. So, the movement of the stylus should be parallel to this uh, datum. So, in that case, uh, this uh, line should be made, this generator should be made parallel to this uh, uh, datum. So, in such cases we can use uh, the work table with uh, ball joint, uh, we can tilt uh, the uh, the work table so that uh, the generator becomes parallel to the movement. Also another uh, provision is we can uh, tilt the drive unit itself. You can see here there is a knob here for adjusting uh, the height of this. That means uh, to change the inclination of uh, uh, the movement and also there is provision uh, for moving the total uh, drive unit up and down for uh, vertical height uh, adjustment. Now, uh, let us uh, conclude uh, this uh, lecture. In this uh, lecture, we studied uh, the various uh, parameters which are used uh, to specify the roughness like roughness parameters, waviness uh, parameters and uh, spacing uh, uh, parameters and also we learnt about the different methods of uh, uh, um, measurement of uh, surface uh, finish. Also, we started uh, discussion on uh, stylus uh, type uh, instrument. We discussed about the skid and then uh, the stylus and then tip radius of the stylus etcetera. Now, uh, we will conclude this uh, session. In the next class, we will continue with the discussion of uh, the stylus uh, type uh, instruments. Thank you. Yeah.